Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Lauren from Guthrie and Ganny, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the recording of the live question and answer session that I did on the Instagram platform on Monday, the 10th of July, 2023. So I'm going to be answering all of the questions that you've sent in beforehand, just asking for different tips and advice on your sewing and dressmaking projects. And then I've also got lots of lovely fabrics from around the shop as well to give some recommendation and suggestions for different fabric and pattern combinations as well so lots of inspiration to be had if you're watching here on youtube and you've got any questions you'd like me to answer in a future session then please feel free to leave a comment below and i can add it to my list you can also message and email the shop as well i'll put the contact details in the description to this video but everything all of the fabrics that you see are available on my website and um, we ship worldwide so you can shop online there and um, some of the patterns that i may suggest they're maybe not ones that we stock but um hopefully yeah lots of inspiring ideas to help you get started on your sewing projects so i'll switch over to the live now i hope you enjoy it and i'll see you soon lovely to see you all joining hi everyone i hope you're all doing really well and that you've had a nice day and that you have had a nice weekend and yeah that you're all good ready for some fun sewing chat hearing about various sewing conundrums getting some pattern and fabric inspiration. So yeah, feel free to feel free to chip in and ask any questions as I'm chatting as well. It's really nice to hear from you guys as well because sometimes I don't know all of the answers. Hope your voice is better. Thank you. I would say it's probably like 99% better. Um, but that's very kind um, it's almost there. Um, yeah, I'm definitely much less croaky than I was before. Um, somebody saying lovely shirt, thank you. Um, so, so yeah, one of the things on my list to chat to you about tonight is the Sewing Society kits that we launched last week. Um, good evening, I missed your questions and if you have time, do you have any fabric recommendations for the Mitchell trousers? Um, before I forget, yeah I do, if you have a look at our blended bamboo fabric it's really nice. It would be really nice for the Mitchell trousers. Good evening from Sweden. Hello. And from Cheshire as well. <clears throat> um, so yeah, one of the things that is on my list to chat to you about is the Sewing Society kits that we released last week and um, they were really, really popular and they sold out really quickly. And I'm really sorry for those of you that missed out on them. Um, I'm really sorry about that. I'm, honestly, it's like I wish I had magic ball that would tell me how much fabric I have to buy in advance for the kits so that I could meet your every demand that you need but I'm really sorry it's just it's so hard to judge sometimes because I'm having to buy the fabric quite far in advance it's not always easy to get the quantities that I get right Um, I do obviously I do try really hard um, with that but yeah sometimes they just um you know, I, I can't get any more of the fabric and I'd try to get more of this stripy one. But the reason I wanted to wear it anyway and to share it with you is because I think the pattern is really great. Um, it's the Paper paper Theory Olia shirt and you can still get the video that went along with the kits. And if you are maybe like new to working with stripes or you want some advice about working with stripes as well, um, the videos that came with the kit that you can still get um, separately go into quite a lot of detail on that so i think there's definitely like a lot of skills that you can learn from those videos that's like generally about working with stripes and cutting them out and um, and it does look really good in a stripey fabric so the one we had in the kit was a viscose fabric but the stripes in it are yarn dyed which means that they're like woven into the fabric as opposed to being printed on um, and you can really use that to your advantage when you've got a stripe that's woven into a fabric because it can really help you to get the pieces cut out straight on the grain um, and you know get everything to like hang properly and be really level um, so we do we do have like a tiny little bit of fabric left over we do have a little bit of a waiting list for that now but you can always email us we can add you to the the wait list for that um we've got we've got a little bit of this left and a little bit of the white one and then some like sort of shorter cut lengths of the other stripe colors um which will be available eventually um so yeah you can always email us and and get on the waiting list for that um but yeah 
thank you um, everybody for loving the kit so much. Um, hi from a very soggy Cornwall, hello, yes, very soggy here in Birmingham as well. Um, and Banbury this evening, hello. My shirt kit is out for delivery today in the US. You are so fast. Oh, that's great. It's made it all the way over there already. Um, I've just finished my next blouse today and I really love it. That's great. Make sure you send us a picture. Um, do you make the same amount of kits each month or do you adjust it on how you think they will sell? We do. It does really vary. Um, and so, sometimes because we have to buy the fabric so far in advance so that I can ensure that I like get the fabric in the first place. Sometimes we buy it without knowing like exactly what we'll use it for. So it might be like we get like when we got this fabric, for example, we didn't 100% know what we were going to use it for. But then when we come to choose a pattern and we do the lay plans for it and work out how much is then going to go into the kit, um, that can then obviously affect how many kits that we can make depending on how much fabric that we've got. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it can be really hard to tell because sometimes I think certain colours will be more popular than another. So then I'll like plan to make more of them. And then, yes, then sometimes like the opposite happens and like a different one's more popular. <laughs> um, so yeah, as I said, I, I really do wish that I had um, a special magic view into the future to know exactly what I'd need. But yeah, it's all part of the fun. Of trying to work it out. Um, I managed to buy the two kits while on holiday in Croatia. Well done. Had to be on the ball as I was an hour ahead. Ah, yeah, working that out. I was so disappointed to miss out this time. I know I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I really do. I do feel really bad that, that people missed out. I wish there was something that I could do. I, I tried to get more fabric. They just don't have it anymore. Um, how do you launder and care for your viscose or viscose blended garments? Um, <clears throat> I would... I would say if you wash them at 30 degrees in a regular cycle with the washing machine and just air dry them, press them with a nice hot steamy iron, um, that will um, preserve preserve them um, as, for as long as possible. Obviously, the more harsher conditions that you launder something in, the quicker it will wear the fabric down. Um, so I would always suggest, my, my advice to you is, is 30, but I actually tend to wash at 40, but that's me personally. That's just what I like to wash at. But... Um, I would probably suggest 30 is safer, kinder to the fabric. Um, okay, so the other things that were on my list to just chat to you about before I get into all of your questions are we've got the new Fibre Mood magazine, which was released last week and it's very summery indeed. Um, as you can see, there's a swimsuit on the front um, and then inside it is like really, really lovely summery, summery patterns and quite a few accessories as well, a baseball cap. Um, there's quite a few, there's some shorts, neat little dresses, a cute little shirt. Um, there's also some bag patterns as well, like a little sort of cross body bag, a little sort of pouch thing as well. Um, so yeah, some really cute summery patterns in there. And then we've also got one of the fabrics that's featured in the, the magazine that I thought was really cool. Um, this one here is really unusual fabric. It's a viscose and linen blend. 50 linen, 50 viscose, it's 23, 20 a metre. It's the Marisol Lime Stripe Linen Viscose Fabric. And it's got quite an interesting structure because obviously the viscose in it makes it quite floppy. But then the way that the stripes are sort of woven into, it's like textured. But then the linen obviously then does give it some structure. So yeah, it's just like a really, really sort of unusual fabric that I think would kind of hold its structure and shape really nicely. Um, and the the garment that they made in the in the magazine in it is a top. It's actually a kid's top. Um, it's this one here, which is called the Marisol. But it, I, I think it actually looks really like the Tanita top, which I think is the adult version, which I've made before. You can sort of recognise it. It's really simple, sort of like bat wing kind of sleeves and elastic gathers at the bottom. But yeah, I think it would really like hold the sort of puffiness and shape of that, which would look really cool. So yeah, if you had anything with more like dramatic sleeves, I think it would be nice, nice structure for that one. Um, so yeah, and then we've got, I've got a couple of new ones that have been added to the website since last week as well. They're both plain weave viscoses and quite lightweight. So I would say good for tops and blouses and shirts and that kind of thing. I think if you were making a dress, you might feel like you want to line it just in a plain viscose. We have plain viscoses that you can line stuff with. Um, but some really nice colours here. I love that teal colour. Then it's like a sort of mustardy colour and then a kind of like a wine ready colour as well. 
Um, so this is the stamped rings viscose fabric. And then the other one is this one here, which is again is quite light in colour. So I would pro yeah, I would probably say maybe for a dress you might feel like you want to line this. I think it would feel maybe like a bit too sort of see-through and summery. Maybe if it was like you were wearing it over a swimsuit or something on holiday, it might be okay. Floral kaleidoscope viscose fabric is this one. So they are both in the, the just arrived section now. <coughs> excuse me, and then the other thing on my list of stuff is that the new window display, which was behind me, was it behind me last week? Can't remember now. Yeah, I think it was. Um, I've got the, the blog post and the video is out about that now, so you can check out the video, see like a close up of all the different garments, and it's all listed in the blog, like what the patterns are and what the fabrics are and everything. So yeah, you can check that out on now on the website as well, if you want any more details about the window display. Um, okay, so on to the questions that have been sent in beforehand. Um, the first one was, I'm making the Atelier Jupe Olivia dress and it has a belt and I can imagine it slipping, like sl the, the belt tie sort of slipping and coming undone. Any ideas for holding it in place? This is just like a sort of looser kind of pull, pull on and off over your head dress. But, but yes, you make a belt out of the fabric to then sort of tie it in and make it a bit more fitted at the waist. Now, I believe that this pattern doesn't have any belt loops and I would 100% suggest either adding them or you can add like really fine dainty thread ones as well. Um, I've done that on a couple of things before, but yeah, you base it on the, the, the first one that's coming to mind is the, I think we did it on the, the Sudley kit, Megan Nielsen Sudley kit, and then also probably maybe the Lyra dress as well, Tell Me The Buttons Lyra dress, but it's just basically you sort of make knots with thread and it makes like a really subtle little belt loop. So I would definitely have that to keep it in place. I think it would maybe depend on like the finish or the texture of the viscose because it's just a plain wee viscose and it's not, you know, when you like, maybe like when you rub the fabric together, you can feel it sort of like catching on itself a little bit. You might find that it's okay. Um, you could, I think, you know, you could put like little poppers in it if you wanted to try and hold it closed. But I would say what, what might end up happening is that maybe just generally as you're wearing it, the fabric might sort of relax and kind of stretch out a little bit as well. Um, I guess if you put interfacing in the belt, maybe wouldn't do that. But I don't know if you would want the belt to be too stiff. Um, so then even if you did put poppers in, they might, the, the position that they need to be in over time might change anyway. Um, but I would probably suggest that if you, you know, if you put, um, if you put belt, belt loops in to like hold it in place and tie it, I actually think it would probably be fine. And worst case, if it is slipping undone over time, just those little, like really fine little sort of plastic, almost like invisible poppers that you could sew on. Um, yeah, somebody's saying the Tilling the Buttons had a tutorial for chain loops. Yeah, for the belt. Um, I thought it did. Um, okay, the next question was, I realised that knit fabric has to be dried flat after pre-washing to ensure it doesn't stretch out of shape. Very true. But what about woven fabric? Is it at risk of stretching on the bias if it's hung out on a washing line? So I would say some woven fabrics are probably more prone to this than others. And it depends on the weave of the fabric. So if it's like quite a loose open weave, then potentially yes. Sometimes it can also depend on maybe like the length of fabric you've got as well, or like the way that you hang on the washing line. Um, might sort of like stretch it out a little bit as well. As I would say, if you're like hanging it up on a line, it's probably good. You know, like a like a rope or string or whatever. It's probably good if the fabric can sort of almost be like over it, so that there's equal weight on either side. Because I feel like if you peg it. Um, and it's just kind of hanging down then where that selvage is, where you peg it, it might stretch out a little bit. Unless it's got like a really high thread count, it's quite a thick, dense fabric, then it probably wouldn't do that. Um, so, so yeah, I think some fabric's going to be more susceptible to, than others. And if you do have a setup where you are able to like dry it a bit more flat or yeah, like hang it somewhere a bit more with even weight on it, then that would be good. Um, I tend, to, uh, the way that my stairs are, I've got like a banister bit on like the landing and I, I quite often will hang fabric off of that. Um, and sometimes I'll sort of fold the fabric as well. So I'm getting it kind of hanging evenly. 
um, and that, that I tend to hang it there a lot. Only because my washing line outside situation is not great, but that's another story that I'm sure you're not really interested in. Um, okay, the next question is a beginner overlocker recommendation. So I use the Genome 6234XL and I, I would say, I don't really know a huge amount about like the range of different overlockers that are out there. It's probably not like the cheapest one that you can get. I would say it's like maybe just like kind of middle of the range and um, it's the ones that we have in the studio here for all the workshops they're like really good they're reliable we've had them for years so I can recommend that particular model but I don't have a huge amount to compare it against and um, so so yeah so, some others um, watching might have specific recommend beginner overlocker recommendations <clears throat> I mean, I think if you're at the stage where you're investing in an overlocker, it sounds to me like you're probably quite a serious dressmaker anyway, and you're like spending a lot of time doing it and investing in the right machines. So I would, my, I feel like my advice generally is like the same when you're looking at buying machines. If you, you know, if it's a serious hobby for you and you're doing it a lot, it's good to try and invest as much as you can really in it. Because if you get something really cheap, then it's likely, that, and you're sewing a lot, then it's likely that you'll just outgrow it quicker and you'll feel like you want something newer sooner. In which case it might be better to just maybe almost like stretch the budget a little bit to get something a bit better and it'll last you for longer then. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Okay, somebody's suggesting thick towels on a table and lay your fabric flat, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, okay, the next question was, the saltwater slip dress, would you reinforce the back seam? That's the Friday Pattern Company pattern. It's just like quite a really sort of spaghetti straps, like thin, um, so not thin, sorry, like straight cut kind of simple dress that you would, uh, that you can wear on its own, but it might be you want to wear it underneath other things as well. Um, and yeah, the question was, would you reinforce the back seam? I would probably say no. Um, I don't think I would, because I feel like it might sort of affect how everything else hangs. Um, so I'm going to say no to that, but I haven't made it before. Um, just add that as a claws at the end. Um, okay, the next one was, I struggle to overlock woven fabrics to finish the seams. Any advice, please? Um, so I think, I mean, the thing with overlockers is they go quite fast, don't they? Um, and you, so you need to like really be on it with how much your pressure you're putting on the foot pedal so that it goes at a speed that you're like able to control. Um, I think the, the other thing that's generally also worth bearing in mind for machine sewing and overlocker sewing is that when you like start sewing a seam, please don't ever feel committed to like keeping your foot on the pedal until you get to the end of it. You can't like stop and pause and rearrange things. And I would say that's definitely important when you're overlocking because you want to be constantly checking that you're not like getting something caught underneath and then accidentally overlocking something together and the knife's like cutting into it. Um, so it's always good to like stop and rearrange your fabric as you're overlocking and um, depending on what seam allowance you're using, what you're making, it might be that you're you're trimming the seam allowances down a little bit as you sew. Um, so it's almost like you're cutting a little bit of fabric away, or it might be that maybe you want you're you're a bit scared of the blade on your overlocker and you want to you can always um maneuver the blade out, like sort of turn it round and put it away so that then the overlocker is not going to cut anything. You could trim your seam allowances beforehand and then just just overlock them and that might maybe make you feel a little bit more uh, comfortable that, that there's, there's no blade going to cut anything. Um, but yeah, I think it's just about really like lining the raw edge up um, and, and experimenting, getting it in the right position. Um, but if you're watching and you're having like a specific issue with that, that I, you feel like I've not answered, then please just comment. Um, okay, let's see. So a few, a few recommendations for the overlocker. I've got a brother 1034D for my first one, but already a serious sore and outgrew it in a year. Good to know. Brother 2104D overlocker, my first from brother from Sewing Machines Direct. Had a DVD tutorial, fantastic machine for a beggar, a beginner. I'd recommend my brother 3034D overlocker. I had it years and it's never let me down. So a few models kicking about of brother ones there. I'm so sorry, my internet dropped out. What overlocker to do, do you use? The Genome 6234XL. Sewing is a bit like driving. You have to regulate your acceleration. Indeed. Practice on a spare piece of fabric. Yeah, good advice always. I am making the I Am Merlin cloak with your double-faced check blended fabric. Has a teal check in it. 
can you recommend a lining fabric and color um <clears throat> I, I probably would, can you, I don't, I'm not actually sure if we still have that fabric. If you send me a picture of it, then I'll see what linings we've got um, that match. And then I can suggest some that way. It's one of your ex designer fabrics. Yeah, I'm not hundred percent sure if we've still got that one. I can't picture it. Brothers are easier to thread than Janome. Okay, interesting, maybe worth bearing in mind. Okay, the next one was, I live in Liverpool and I'm about to open a fabric shop. Excellent more fabric the better i say um what is your advice um <laughs> in one line i'm not totally sure um this is going to be quite generic but i feel like you have to view owning a fabric shop um i guess like any business potentially in general um not as a job but as a lifestyle and just um you know really lean into it and um yes yeah, it, it is quite full on it's, but i wouldn't have any other way with such lovely customers like you guys okay the next question was do i size down with my olia shirt or do i make the oversized shirt i think i want now there's a question i think the benefit here with the olia shirt is that a lot of people have made it so if you have a look at the hashtag for it you're going to see loads and loads of different versions and it will give you an idea of like different ways that people have made it and styled it and everything but i think maybe generally think about how you might want to style it so this this part i've made a few different sizes and um, which you can see in the modeled samples that go with the kit um, this particular one I sized down by two sizes. I mean, you can see that it's still quite oversized because that's the way it's designed to be. Like, it's not got any bust starts or anything. Um, so, so yeah, you can kind of see like the fit of this one. Um, I, I always tend to like roll up my sleeves on my shirts and I've been wearing this one in a few different ways. Some I've, I've like worn it open. So I think if you're going to wear it open, then it might be, you know, like either sized, oversized or otherwise might be okay. But then if you feel like you're maybe wanting it to not drown you too much, maybe you're going to tuck it in and just sit like a little bit neater on you, then maybe you might want to size down a little bit. So yeah, I sized down my two sizes, but I guess that was more just to like show you the extreme of what it might look like when you size down. You know, you could maybe just size down like one size and then it's probably still going to be like oversized on you anyway. Um, so, so yeah, my advice is to like just try and generally like look at lots of people's different versions and see what they've done. Um, somebody else is suggesting the Janome Air Thread 2000D. Um, yeah, I bought my mum a Janome Air Thread and oh, it's it is smooth but it is expensive um okay the next one was when you cut zips why don't they undo when you wear them as the metal bits have been cut excellent question so the reason they don't undo is because you need to do something to them to replace those metal bits so say you were making a pair of trousers for example it's got a fly front and then the zip is like you know it sort of attaches into the waistband you wouldn't be cutting off the top of the zip where those metal bits are until you'd sewn your waistband in and secured the top of the zip. So then that's why the zip doesn't come undone because the top of the zip secured in the, in the waistband. So then the zip pull can't ever get past that. If you shorten a zip from the bottom, um, I've done this quite a few times for like an invisible zip in a dress, for example, or maybe it's like a little bit too long and you need to shorten it. Um, and what you need to do is get like thread, a hand sewing needle with a double length of thread. And then I usually like sew round the zip teeth when it's closed that wherever I'm going to shorten it to effectively create like a new bottom bit of the zip or a new metal bit. Um, and then, you know, it might be that then you're, you know, obviously like then cutting that away afterwards, the bottom bit that you don't need. Um, so, so yeah, that's, you need to do something to stop, stop it from coming undone. Um, okay. Somebody's asking, you were wearing a pair of denim shorts with the white Ollie up. What pattern were they, please? That was the Dawn jeans, Megan Nielsen Dawn jeans. Always wanted to try the Ollie up. So pleased to get a kit. That's good. I'm a little late. No worries. Thanks for asking, answering my questions about the Avery leggings. No probs at all. Um, okay. The next question was, can double gauze be cut in the bias to make a long skirt? Simplicity 2184. And what to line it with, please? I personally, I don't think that I would. If anybody else has made a bias cut skirt with double gauze and you feel like it's worked and it's looked really good, please share. 
I don't think it would probably be my own personal choice. Um, the reason is, is that double gauze is quite a loose weave and it tends to kind of sort of be quite, not stretchy, but it tends to like move around a lot and be like a little bit bouncy and can sometimes be like a little bit inconsistent and in how it sort of hangs depending on how you iron it as well. Um, I don't want to sound like I'm putting you generally off double gauze because I actually really love double gauze and I've got lots of clothes made in it. It's a really nice fabric, but I feel like for a bias cut something, I don't, I'm not sure it's a good match. Only because when you cut something on the bias, it does then make it like even more stretchy and move around a little bit more. And I think I would probably just worry that like the seams maybe wouldn't sit totally flat. Um, so I would probably suggest maybe like a nice cotton linen or um, or even like linen fabric as well or viscose linen would be nice instead. Um, okay, somebody's saying I have the Bernina L460 over locker and I use it all the time. Great. Um, thanks Lauren, what would you use instead of the double gauze for a long cut, a long skirt cut in the bias? Yeah, as I said, probably like a cotton linen or like chambray or a viscose linen or linen would be nice nice summary version okay the next question was is there any real advantage of using tear off violin shield rather than just stay stitching so i've never actually like stabilized a neckline by using tear off a tear off violin shield before but the advantage would be really that sometimes when you stay stitch it can still distort the fabric a bit and get it out of shape a little bit so depending on what you were making, you know, that might have like a big, bigger implications or not. Also, some fabrics are just like generally more prone to like sort of stretching out or getting distorted. Um, so that would probably be the advantage. But what I tend to do rather than stay stitching is I use forming tape. Some people have probably heard me talk about this before because I really like it. It's basically like a really lightweight, fine iron-on interfacing that is cut on the bias. So it means that you can mold it around curves like necklines, armholes, etc. And it's basically got a stitch within it that kind of acts like a stay stitch. So basically when you iron this onto the wrong side of your fabric, it's like you're ironing on a stay stitch. So it can be really good to make, like you can put your fabric out, you can make sure it's the same size as your pattern piece, that it's not stretched out. And then you can put your forming tape on to stabilize it and kind of fix it. And I find that that works really well. So that would be my suggestion to try there. Okay, the next question was, do you have any good tips for fitting trousers? My waist is always bigger than my hips. Um, <clears throat> that obviously there's like, can be a little bit of a can of worms with fitting trousers, can be various things going on. Um, but it's, you know, it's really common that waist and hips are different sizes. That's the case for me as well. My, my hips are always smaller than my waist. So you could, it, you know, it might just even be a case of like cu cutting one size at the waist and then merging into a different size at the hips. Um, it depends on how big the difference is. Um, but it might even just be that trying that is enough. Um, but but yeah, if you if you're like new to trouser making, then making a toile is good because it can just try and help you sort of narrow down and identify things that you might need to do. And then I usually always recommend as a sort of first kind of starting point port of call that the closet core pants fitting free e guide thing that they have in their blog or maybe you can download it as like a nice sort of simple way to kind of get introduced to the types of things that you might do to fit trousers. Um, will the forming tape stay put when the garment is washed? In my experience it does, yes. Um, but usually by the time then the garment is actually constructed and sewn, that the main function and purpose of it is already served it because the stay stitching or like the forming tape interfacing, if you're using that instead, is there to stop the neckline stretching out during construction. Um, Cashmere has a great book out, it's called Ahead of the Curve, it gives advice and great photos on how to fit trousers. Yeah, I've heard good things about that book as well. Um, the forming tape is so good on viscose tops, agreed. Um, okay, the next question was, what did you start with to have your own shop? Um, <laughs> it's funny, like I got a couple of questions about this in the same week. Um, I <clears throat> didn't have very much. Um, this, we, we hardly had any 
stock at all. It was also like a lot, I feel like it was a lot harder back then to get good dressmaking fabrics compared to what it's like now. Um, maybe I need to do like a sort of separate chat about all of that. Let's stick with the sewing for now. Um, okay, how do you check you have the straight grain before cutting your pieces? So if you're using a woven fabric, then looking at the selvage is really good because the selvage is created as the fabric is woven. So the selvage is a good point of reference for knowing the direction of the threads that have woven the fabric in the first place. So the threads are gonna be parallel to the selvage and they're gonna be 90 degrees to the selvage. So when you then come to cut out, if you've got your selvages, you've ironed your fabric, you've got your selvages together, you've like smoothed everything out, there's no wrinkles or anything, then you know that the fabric's going to be on the straight grain and what I usually always do especially if it's like a viscose fabric or something that's slipping around a lot is that I will line it up what I'll line the the fold line or the, I usually cut out my kitchen island to be honest so then I can line up the fold in the fabric or the selvages with like the straight edge of the like the table that I'm working on because that then helps you to know that the fibers have sort of squared up and straightened out but if you're using a fabric that's got like a pattern woven into it or a stripe or like a texture woven into it as well, you can use that to help you know that you've got the fabric straight on the grain as well, which like in this example here, you can do that because these stripes are woven into the fabric. So making sure that the grain line is like parallel with them, you know, then that helps you to know you've got it on the grain line as well. Um, can you do a sewing gadgets video, please? After having kits, I now have a ham, loop turner and hot hammer. Would love to know what else you would recommend. Yeah, that's a really good idea. I will definitely add it to my list. Thank you. Um, okay, the next question was, what's the best way to finish viscose raw edge, a narrow hem? Um, I think it would maybe depend on what you were making. But yeah, if I was going to do like a narrow hem on a, on a viscose fabric, then quite often what I'll do is I'll sew a line of stitching that's maybe like five about five millimeters so like a quarter of an inch away from the raw edge um on the sewing machine and then i'll use that line of stitching as a guide to press it back to the wrong side and then i'll press it again just trying to turn it as little as possible and then that's that line of stitching not only does it act as a really useful pressing guide it also helps you to stop it also helps to stop the fabric from stretching out as well um, and then you can just top stitch it in place afterwards that's yeah that's what i would usually do for a narrow hem on a viscose um, okay the next one was um to add on to the elastic waistband question i was looking for a tip on the top stitching so this is where, so the other kit that we did last week, which I didn't talk to you about um, yet, is the True Bias Danny trousers and shorts, um, which is another really lovely summery pattern. We use the viscose linen in those kits. Um, we do still have some other colours of that same type of fabric available in the shop. But yeah, it's got quite a deep elastic waistband, which is um, five millimetres. So, you know, it's quite tall. And then to hold the sort of waistband and the elastic in place, you do lines of top stitching on the waistband. Now, what you need to be aware of when you're doing those lines of top stitching is that you have to stretch the elastic as you're sewing it. But because the fabric, the, because the machine is trying to feed the fabric through the machine and you're like pulling it to stretch the fabric effectively, you could end up in like a little bit of like a tug of war situation, like you're fighting against the machine. So what you have to do is like, does require like a little bit of coordination and like trying to keep everything under control. But you can, um, you could put like a poster on your machines so that helps you to line up the edge of the fabric. So you get it an even distance from the edge, a post-it note or some masking tape or washi tape or something like stick something on the machine that you can line the fabric up with. And then you kind of have to have like one hand behind the machine at the back and the other hand at the front. So you're pulling the elastic taut and then putting your foot in the pedal and then letting the machine stitch. And it's kind of moving your hands forward at the same rate that the machine's stitching because you don't want to be pulling it through. Um, but at the same time, you don't want to be pulling so hard towards you that the machine can't move forward and sort of stitch on the spot. So it's like getting the balance between the two. And again, stopping, rearranging everything, straightening it out, stretching it out, doing the next section, stopping and so on. Um, so hopefully that helps. I have one hand in front and the other behind you. Yeah, that's how I do it as well. Exactly. Um, it can take a little bit of kind of set up and coordination, but 
you get there in the end. Okay, the next one was, I'd like to make some trousers for myself, but I'm unsure of a pattern and fabric for my level. I've made a few children's garments, but not many adult ones. It would be my first pair of trousers and I'd like them to be summery ones. So um, I know a lot of people like the Tilling the Button Safia trousers, which are in one of her, her books. I think it's maybe the Make It Simple book. And then also the, the new Tilling the Buttons Estee cord. The trousers of that are also like pretty simple ones as well. And the, or, or the other one is the Friday Pattern Company Saguaro trousers. I would say they are pretty like simple and um, easy ones, like really nice summery ones. So for that, I would suggest you could do the Serona linen, which comes in lots of colours. It's going to be nice and easy to work with, easy to control, makes lovely summery trousers. Um, the Enzyme linen would also be nice as well. It's a little bit more stable than the Serona linen. It's got a bit more structure, but obviously nice and classic for summer and comes in loads of lovely colours too. So that's the Enzyme linen. And then the other one that I thought would be quite good too, which is maybe like a bit more sort of versatile and like a denim -y sort of fabric is this indigo combed cotton chambray fabric so so yeah it kind of looks like denim but it's like pretty lightweight and I think it would still work really nicely in trousers that have got that sort of gathered waistband so hopefully some nice ideas for you there somebody's somebody else is also saying needle down yeah that's good points when you're um stretching that elastic to sew the top stitching on the waistband is that when you when you take your foot off the pedal you want to if, if your machine's got that function try and set it so that the needle stops in the fabric and um, okay somebody's also suggesting the wardrobe by me is an easy pants easy pat okay sorry let me start that again wardrobe by me easy pants are super easy excellent glad to know they live up to the name um, okay, the next one was, I was wondering if you have any fabric recommendations for the True Bias Jessie T or a t-shirt weight jersey in ge general. So this is more of like a looser fitting sort of boxy shape tee. And if you want it to kind of hold and maintain that boxy shape, then something that's got cotton in it is going to be good. So I had got a couple of cotton jerseys. This one is the um muted navy cotton interlock jersey fabric that's 100 percent cotton so it does have some stretch but it's not got a last stain in it so um it is it, it doesn't have much recovery because it's not got a last stain but it does have really nice structure and it is still stretchy and um, so i think that would that would be really nice for that sort of more boxy style tee um, and then also just um like a regular this is a little bit lighter weight this is just a regular organics basics organic basics cotton jersey which again comes in lots of colors and um, this particular one is the peppermint but yeah lots of really nice plain colors we do have some um prints on cotton jerseys as well and um, or if you wanted something <clears throat> that was a little bit more a little bit more sort of floppy then this one which again comes in lots of colors is the petrol loop back jersey fabric and it's a medal um, so it's a bit more it's it's got a nice weight to it because it's looped back but it's a bit more floppy so it won't hold the boxy shape as much but it would still make a really nice t-shirt and um, so a few options there for that true bias jesse t <clears throat> my voice is starting to go um okay i'm sewing the tilling the button sky dress and the bodice neckline keeps on curling forward and showing the bias binding despite stay stitching first and me careful not to stretch it while sewing and generously cutting into the internal neckline seem to try and prevent this any tips and to stop this forward curl so what sometimes what i've seen people do is that before they actually attach the bias binding on is that they'll sort of um like kind of line it up with the edge of the bias binding and like press it into place so it's almost like you're kind of steaming it into the shape of the neckline and then once you've sewn it on, you can under stitch it as well. So that's when you're doing a line of stitching that's visible on the binding. It's through the seam allowances underneath. So then when you flip it to the inside, that that stay stitching or not stay stitching, sorry, under stitching does help the binding to just sort of like roll into the inside a little bit more. And then just making sure that you're really like pressing everything flat that you're like seeing a little line of the, the outer fabric when you press it to the inside and then top stitching it down and then pressing everything again. Pressing is really key with bias binding to make it sit flat. You need water in your iron so that lots of steam is generated. Um, okay, somebody's saying I've used that organic basic cotton jersey for a boxy-ish t-shirt and it was just the right fabric for it and super quality. Oh, that's good. 
Um, excellent to hear, thank you. The Pomona pants are elasticated and an easy make. Good to know. If you have any viscose linens to hand for the long skirt to cut in the bias, please can you show some? Um, I think to hand, I've only got plain ones. Um, it I've, I've got I've got a few prints in viscose linen, but but yeah, I've got like a range of planes. This is the black one here, um, but just so you can sort of like see the the kind of drape and floppiness of it, I think it would work really nicely for a bias cut because it just it just hangs really nicely this type of fabric. Um, Helen's closet Arden has there there that's another simple trouser that's um, got lots of t beginners tips. Good to know also thank you okay i plan to make a top for my holiday out of viscose i have everything i need for the top itself but i didn't buy any viscose for the muslin and i now don't have time to order any before i go away would you make the muslin out of cotton and the stash and accept it won't be as drapey or skip the muslin completely i think it depends on what you're making and how easy it would maybe be to like customize and adapt it to sort of fit you once you're actually making it um, so I, d I don't, I don't know if I'd like totally know enough context around that question, but I think, I think either could be fine. You could, if you just want like a general idea, then the cotton could, you know, the cotton will still give you an idea of fit. The garment just won't hang in the same way as it would in a viscose. Um, but yeah, maybe you can just skip it if the garment's a certain way that you could sort of like just change it and kind of tweak it a little bit once you've actually made it. it maybe depends on how sort of precious the the main kind of final viscose fabric is whether you want to experiment too much with it or not okay the next one was any fabric suggestions for the named kilo wrap dress i absolutely love this dress it's it's such an unusual design but it's just it's quite simple but it's got like a the weird sort of shape that go, goes out at the side with ties that you then wrap round so then it kind of looks like a wrap dress but it's not you just pull it on and off over your head so the two <clears throat> Sorry, not the two. Um, one of the ones that I showed before, the, the loop back jersey fabric would be good. I think it's got a nice weight. It's a little bit thicker. So if you're wanting something that's got a bit more weight to it and going to be like a little bit cozier maybe into the, the autumn, then this is a nice one. But otherwise, if you're looking for something lighter weight, then we've got a few different plain cotton bamboo jerseys, which would be nice. This is 68 bamboo and 20 cotton. Bamboo tends to make fabric a little bit floppier, which I feel like is good for the named kilo because it can feel like a lot of fabric's getting wrapped around if you use something like the cotton jersey that's got a bit more structure. And then the other one that would be really good as well, you can see it flopping around already. This is the tensile jersey, so the cornflower tensile medal jersey fabric, which is really lovely and floppy. It's so silky to wear. I absolutely love this one. The, the, the kilo wrap dress that I've got is in a fabric really similar to this. Um, so, so yeah, that would be my suggestions. Does the kilo wrap dress feel bulky around the front? If you use a fabric that is drapey, like a medal, a tensile, a bamboo or a viscose, then I personally don't think it does. If you were to use a cotton, I feel like it might feel a little bit more bulky. Yeah. Um, Okay, I made the kilo in some stretch velvet, perfect for Christmas parties. Ooh, that sounds fancy. Um, would the enzyme linen work for the Danny trousers? Yes, I already had the pattern and the elastic, but I just need to order some fabric. Yeah, I think it would work really nicely. Um, okay, do you have a sequin fabric on a velour backing? I'm going to say no, but I feel like we might have had one at one point. And there might be some in the sale that was black and had black and white sequins on it, but I'm not 100% sure if we've got any more, but if we do, it will be in the sale section. Um, okay, trouser pattern suggestions for the tensile denim. So I was presuming that this was the 10.4 ounce tensile denim here, which is the fabric that we had in the Megan Nielsen Durban jumpsuit earlier in the year. Oh, I've just made the tag explode off there. Um, we've got it in this sort of darker denim and then yeah, I think we've got it in three colours, like a much lighter weight denim, darker one, and then more like a medium weight, uh, medium shade. Ugh, I'm starting to lose what I'm saying now. The colours, light colour, medium colour, dark colour. They're all the same weight, they're 10.4 ounces. Um, so you can have a look at the Durban jumpsuit listing to sort of see how the fabric hangs, because one of the versions of the Durban has got a wide leg, and I think it, look, it works really nicely in the wide leg. I absolutely love my Durban jumpsuit. So comfy, it's like a really comfy fabric to wear. 
so I was thinking you could do the, you could do the classic closet core Jenny trousers, which have got quite a really nice white wide leg, but they're a bit more sort of tailored and fitted around the waist. Um, and then I think I think maybe the closet core Pietras as well. Lots of peeping going on outside. Um, so yeah, but it's a, it is a really lovely fabric. Um, any idea if the revised kilo wrap has darts? Um, I think they actually, I think they might be redoing it, but making one that's for woven fabrics. And I think maybe the woven fabric one will have darts. But I've got a feeling that the stretch one doesn't. Um, can you use 100% viscose for the kilo? I think you, yeah, I think they're bringing out a, wo a woven version of it. I'm sure they are. Did I dream that? I'd have to check, sorry. Um, okay, the next one was, will you get any more of the Atelier Brunette tile cotton in again? Unfortunately, no. I tried to order some and it wasn't available like on their retailers, like the website that I go to as a shop owner to buy the fabric. So I don't know, they might have maybe have some left, but they don't, they're not selling it to like people, other fabric shops anymore. So I'm sorry, no. Um, I was thinking the assembly line cuff dress would, would be nice for that if you are able to get hold of some from somebody else. Um, okay, the next one was any patterns you think are really versatile, like summer wedding, Christmas party, casual work. The closet core Elodie came to mind in this only because I've seen so many different versions that depending on what fabric you choose, it can look really different. Um, you know, if you choose like a, um, you know, you could choose like quite a bold, like bright print. What did I bring over? I don't know what. I think I forgot to bring fabric over for that. Sorry, but yeah, you could definitely choose like a really kind of bold print like a nice nice wedding dress one but then if you wanted something that was more like kind of every day then you could go you know you could make it in like a lightweight denim we've got some lightweight tensile denim as well which is which would be really nice for it make it like a little bit more casual um so so yeah that one came to mind okay the next one was blue fabric recommendations for the chalk and notch shea dress so what did I bring over for that? I've got a couple of claims that could work. Um, this one here is the Pale Chambray Lyocell fabric, 1120 a meter. Um, Lyocell is basically like tensile and those sort of fibers, so quite floppy, nice sort of lightweight. Um, so there's that one. And then the other one was, the, the other plane was the Smooth Drape tensile, which comes in various different blues. This one is the Lapis colorway really nice blue color there and then I also got a print which I thought would be really nice as well this is a gorgeous lovely summery print it's the cornflower floral viscose fabric and um, so yeah nice blue summery one there which would be good and um, okay somebody's saying I've used the enzyme linen for my Danny trousers and they are lovely yeah I thought that that would work really nicely Okay, the next one was, I'm looking for a caftan dress and a soft flowing crepe fabric, any ideas? So I found the wardrobe by me, Aurora, and the assembly line minimalist and the assembly line caftan all look like quite sort of classic caftan dresses. Um, and I've got this viscose crepe here, which would be nice for it. Um, this is the warm splatter viscose crepe, which is, yeah, it's got that really crepey texture. Um, but because it's viscose, it's nice and sort of floppy and drapey. So I thought that would look nice together. And then we've got your favourite patterns for viscose jersey, bonus ones that don't show all your lumps. I've used the Closet Core Ebony Tee to make tea, tops, t-shirts and dresses. And it's really nice because it's quite, it's got different neckline options, but I've done the sort of lower scoop one. It's really flattering. And so it's a bit more fitted like around the bust and the shoulder, but then it's quite an exaggerated sort of A-line shape. So then it just kind of like drapes and hangs really nicely. But when you make, when you use viscose jersey or tensile or medal, um, any of, or bamboo, any of those floppy jerseys, it just hangs really nicely. Um, so yeah, I've got tops and dresses in it and it's, I, I like it a lot. Um, the next one was best swimsuit fabrics. I've got a couple of the Liberty swim fabrics that we got in last year. Unfortunately, didn't have any more to add to our collection this year, but yeah, still got these two here. My main suggestion, which regular viewers will know, I've heard me say this before, 
Um, if you're making a swimsuit that you're going to go in chlorinated water in, make sure that it's been tested to be chlorine resistant. Otherwise, you might go to the effort to make it and it might sort of disintegrate and kind of degrade a little bit quicker over time. Um, the Liberty ones are suitable for chlorine. Um, so yeah, I would just generally bear that in mind when you're looking for swim suit fabrics. Okay, the next one was wedding guest fabric suggestions for the By Hand London Anna dress. I've got a couple. One's more structured, one's like a little bit more lighter weight. This is the Cobalt Metallic Blur Brocade fabric and I think this would be gorgeous as a wedding, a wedding fabric. It's got lovely like little gold accent threads in it. So that's one suggestion and then my other suggestion is this one here, which does come in more of like a warmer color palette as well. It's the Inkwell Linen Fabric and it's 100% linen, but it's quite, it's quite lightweight. Um, it's not too stiff or anything. I think, it would, I think it would be nice in another like gorgeous, lovely print to wear to a wedding. So a few suggestions there. And then we've got what patterns for your steel blue linen viscose jersey. That's this one here. It does come in some other colorways as well. Um, so this is 55 linen, 45 viscose and it's because it's got linen in it, it's got a little bit more of like a slubbed texture. It's really nice. It's quite lightweight. The viscose in it does make it a bit more floppy and drapey. So the, the ebony would be good for that, as I said before. Um, and then, you know, you could you could make more of like a looser fitting t-shirt as well, like the True Bice Jesse that I was mentioning earlier. It just, it'll just sort of hang more and it's kind of boxy shape. The, that what the Chocolate Waterfall Raglan would be nice in as well. That's actually the one just here behind me on the mannequin um, is another one that I think it would be nice for. And then <clears throat> almost at the end, um, we're getting there time wise. Okay, could you possibly show the navy stretch needle cord and if you think it would be suitable for the Soaholic Thurlow trousers? Yes, I do think it would be suitable for the Soaholic Thurlow trousers. This is it here. It's a really fine needle cord and it's got a stretch in it as well. And I've used the carnation pink colorway to make closet core ginger jeans before which I love I've like worn them to death they're starting to get a bit worn out now um but but yeah I think that would be really nice lovely classic pair of trousers to have and then I'm looking for a lining fabric for a wool winter coat I know it's off season but I start planning early and that's okay I want natural fibers no polyester but still need something slippery for ease putting on and off especially on the sleeves do you have any recommendations what sort of fabrics to look for? I tried to look out where our linings were and I think because we've got so many summery fabrics in at the moment, they've been like tucked away somewhere in the shop and I couldn't actually find them. Um, but we do have some viscose linings that are, you know, they're more like those traditional sort of like slippy type lining fabrics. And because they're made of viscose, they're like a bit more breathable. They're not like the acetate sort of polyester ones. The other type that you can look out for as well as Bemberg, um, that's another um, more of like a, like a breathable sort of fabric that, um, that is slippery as well. So, so I would suggest looking out for them. Um, we do have some in, but just because we don't have a huge amount of space so we, in, in the summer, we tend to not sort of stock as many, but in, you know, come, come sort of kind of end, mid to end of August, we'll have more of that sort of thing. Um, okay, the next one was any advice on how to narrow the neckline of the closet core chilo celio top, please. I find it drops off my shoulders and shows my bra strap. So I was trying to think of the best way to do this because it's got that top's got like a back a, a yoke section in the back bodice, which is, ends up kind of becoming like part of the neckline. And I was thinking like, would you need to do a sort of narrow shoulder adjustment? But I think. I don't think that's necessarily the right thing because if it's just generally like too wide, it's almost like you need to try and like add something on to the neckline, but you're going to need to do it almost, <clears throat> maybe not to the back neckline. I suppose it depends whether you feel like it's too low or not at the back when it could come up a little bit, but it's almost like you need to sort of try and add a little bit extra onto that back yoke section and then onto the front as well to just sort of raise it up a little bit. But then just watch out that the, the angle that you get here doesn't end up sort of sticking up too much. You know, you want to try and keep the line sort of generally straight across. Um, <clears throat> and then if you were doing, if you were adding a facing onto it, you'd obviously then need to like redraft the facing to match that. Or if you had binding on it, then it wouldn't, you know, you just put binding on the different shape neckline. 
but yeah i think initially i thought do you need to do a narrow shoulder adjustment if it's if it's too wide but I'd, yeah i think i think you need to like try and add something else onto it or potentially maybe i can't actually remember how they stack the sizes on that i wonder if you could even just you instead just use like a, a one of the other sizes in the range to like use that as a guide to help you sort of add something onto it potentially um, okay, somebody's asking, would you use a viscose lining with a viscose linen? Or if not, what would you use, please? Um, yeah, I think, I don't I don't know if I would necessarily be lining a viscose linen. Um, but yeah, if you did, if you did want to line it, I would probably suggest using a, a viscose, yeah, to line it. Um, okay, last couple are, can you suggest a nice drapey fabric for the Friday Pattern Company Wilder Top? any the, those two any of the viscose prints really so i've shown you a few tonight those are the new ones there and then that this one would also be really nice too um so so yeah any any of our viscose prints would be really nice for the wilder i think you definitely do need to use something that's lightweight and drapey like like viscose or rayon for for the wilder because it does end up you know it's like quite gathered all the way around the neck and i think it would feel like quite quite bulky and full on if you used anything thicker Okay, the last question was, would the Donny top work with the cool droplet tufted Dolby fabric, which is this one here. Um, it's been really popular. We are starting to run low of it and we can't get any more once it's gone. But yeah, um, I do. I think it would be really nice in this. So yes, is my answer to that. Um, so if anybody else has got any other questions that they want to ask tonight, um, then ask away now. So I'm not going to be here next week. Um, I'm going to be having like a little sort of summer break. Um, it will definitely be for one week. It might potentially be for two weeks, but um, I'm going to have to just sort of see how things go. Um, but but yeah, if I, if I can, I will try to be back two weeks today. But if not, I'm sorry, it'll be three weeks. Um, in which case, I did want to give you some little sneaky sewing society kit hints for August. So initially, we weren't going to do a kit in August. It was going to be like a sort of summer catch up kind of break month. But because we then didn't do a kit in May after we launched the birthday kits, because um, it took us so long to sort of get caught up after that and um, we decided to pause in May instead and then we sort of shuffled everything around and then yeah we've got and um, we do have kits in August now which is exciting so I would say that I know that the two kits this month the Olia shirt and the Diane trousers were probably like a little bit more kind of pushing like intermediate level you know you you kind of like need a bit more sewing experience to sew them I would say the ones in August are are much more approachable for confidence beginners and those just sort of still trying to build up their handmade wardrobe so so yeah if you're a more experienced sewer then it's a nice ni nice quick and easy make and some really beautiful fabrics as well some really special fabrics so so yeah it's it's two two like separates you could you could wear them together if you wanted to again um but yeah just like some really nice kind of I hope I hope that they become patterns for you that you get a lot of use out of. It's nice when you can get a pattern that you can make in like lots of different fabrics and and then end up with like quite different looking garments, but it's using the same pattern. And I feel like the patterns that we've chosen for these kits kind of fit into that category. Um so so yeah that is my hints but there will be a mid-month sewing society newsletter going out next week so there'll be like a little picture and like some clues in there as well um so so yeah but we've still got new things on the horizon coming into the shop i ordered some really beautiful new linen fabrics that are in very lovely and um, they're like different stripes and some really lovely summery colours. I'm hoping that they arrive this week. So yeah, and um, watch out for them in the just arrived section as well. And then when I come back at the end of the month, I will be doing like a new fabrics roundup then as well, as I usually do at the end of the month. That'll be on the YouTube channel too. Um, but but yeah, thank you again for watching everyone. It's been lovely to chat to you all again for another fun hour this evening. I will miss you next week. I really do mean that. Um, so I hope you have a lovely a lovely couple of weeks until I see you again and um, I'm just reading all your lovely messages here you're very welcome everyone there's lots of thanks here but you're very welcome and um, 
so so yeah enjoy the rest of your evening and um i will see you very soon <laughs> bye